feed him in a dog. Mm, hi guys. One hour from right here, north of here in Syracuse, New York, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful, 75 degree bright blue sky sunny day. But here in hell, it is a dark, gloomy, nasty, depressing, cold, yuck fall of 2023 day. Here at Bugs and My Dog Farm, where it is now, we have rolled into another Monday. It's another, the first Monday in the fall of 2023. Just now getting around to my daily doom scrolling as the sun goes down and uh, I have about stopped on this article from Fox News about the zombie apocalypse unfolding on the sidewalks of San Francisco, California, but I managed to hit the edit button on the zombie apocalypse and just came down here to good old popular mechanics, surprising me a second time. This is the second time I have uh, <clears throat> been doom scrolling through Yahoo News and stumbled upon this article in Popular Mechanics, which linked me over to this newest paper by two of my Collapse Chronicles heroes. The very first person I ever interviewed on Collapse Chronicles, that was Paul Ehrlich, and one of the last people I interviewed uh, on Collapse Chronicles, Geraldo Ceballos. So Geraldo and Paul have teamed up to pen the latest uh, Chronicle of the Collapse, which... Uh, we have everything from faster to than previously expected all the way to a rapidly closing window of opportunity. I cannot believe that Paul Ehrlich uh, embarrassed himself by mentioning a, uh, you know, this closing window of opportunity. Paul Ehrlich and I would suspect Geraldo I'm sorry, Gerardo Ceballos, who uh, coined the term, I'm thinking it's Gerardo, wasn't he the guy who coined the term biological annihilation to uh, more accurately describe the sixth mass extinction? It is biological annihilation by one species, meaning humans, against every other species on the planet. Call it what it is. It's not a naturally occurring mass extinction event. It is an unnatural biological annihilation. So Gerardo Ceballos and uh, Paul Ehrlich know as well as anybody on this planet that the window of opportunity to uh, save our fellow earthlings slammed shut about the time that Paul Ehrlich was writing his, <clears throat> you know, much maligned book, The Population Bomb. When was that? 53 years ago. When the population of the planet was less than one half of what it is now. But anyway, we will end up with the window of opportunity. So, uh, Popular Mechanics linked us over to the full paper from the Proceedings of the is it yeah Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, I believe, is what PNAS stands for, and this is their latest paper which officially was released on uh, September 18th, titled <clears throat> Mutilation. I guess that's 
This is close enough simile to annihilation. Mutilation of the tree of life via mass extinction of animal genera. Not just species, but entire genera of animals. So I'm going to, I'm going to read uh, the first third of this and then the closing parts and leave all of the middle with all of the various charts and graphs and all of that. Uh, I will put the link on here if you want to read the middle part, which uh, breaks this all down. But we're going to stick with the beginning and the end. I'm just going to kind of mash it all up. Take it away. Gerardo Ceballos and Paul Ehrlich and explain to the clueless morons reading popular mechanics what is going on on the planet. <clears throat> Starting with the sentence, we are in the sixth mass extinction event. Unlike the previous five, this one is caused by the overgrowth. Like that word, the overgrowth of a single species, Homo sapiens. Although the episode is often viewed as an unusually fast in evolutionary time loss of species, it is much more threatening because beyond that loss, it is causing rapid mutilation of the tree of life where entire branches collections of species, genera, families, and so on, so on, and the functions they perform are being lost. It is changing the trajectory of evolution globally and destroying the conditions that make human life possible. It is an irreversible threat to the persistence of civilization and the livability of future environments for Homo sapiens. Instant corrective actions are required. Mass extinctions during the past 500 million <clears throat> years rapidly removed branches from the phylogenetic tree of life and required millions of years for evolution to generate functional replacements for the extinct organisms. Here, you know, in this new study, we show by examining 5,400 vertebrate genera excluding fishes and, and you know if fish are as screwed as any of the other groups of vertebrae comprising 34,600 species <clears throat> we show that 73 entire genera became extinct since 1500 AD. So roughly in the past 500 years, 73 entire genera of our fellow earthlings have been obliterated off the face of this planet by one species. And of course, that number is going into overdrive. <clears throat> Beyond any doubt, beyond any doubt, the human-driven sixth mass extinction is more severe than previously assessed and is rapidly accelerating. The current generic extinction rates are 35 times higher than expected background rates prevailing in the last one million years under the absence of human impacts. The genre lost in the last five centuries 
would have taken some 18,000 years to vanish in the absence of humans. Current generic extinction rates will likely greatly accelerate in the next few decades due to drivers accompanying the growth and consumption of the human enterprise such as habitat destruction, illegal trade, and climate disruption. If all now endangered genre were to vanish by 2100, extinction rates would not be 35 times higher. Extinction rates would be 354 on average or 511 for mammals times higher than background rates, meaning that genre lost in three centuries would have taken 106,000 and for mammals 153,000 years to become extinct in the absence of one species, can you say, humans. Hmm. Such mutilation of the tree of life and the resulting loss of ecosystem services provided by biodiversity to humanity is a serious threat to the stability of civilization. Immediate, immediate political, economic, and social efforts of an unprecedented scale are essential if we are to prevent these extinctions and their societal impacts, you know, on humans who cause the extinction. And of course, we all know Gerardo Ceballos Paul Ehrlich, Sancho Panza, Sam Mitchell, anybody with half a brain knows goddamn well there is no way in hell that humans, that humans, the, the drivers behind the sixth mass extinction are ever going to rise to the challenge of making immediate political, economic, and social efforts on an unprecedented scale ain't gonna happen. So we might as well say that by the year 2100, extinction rates will go from 35 to 354 times the average for entire genre of our fellow earthlings. There is no goddamn window of opportunity left. The window of opportunity was slammed shut the year that Paul Ehrlich was writing the population bomb. Anyway, where were we? So what has happened over the last century? Let's just look over the last hundred years. Over the last century, the pace of human activities has so accelerated and human overpopulation grown so severe to have created a dramatic global environmental transformation. Most natural ecosystems have been highly modified or have disappeared altogether, and the abundance of wildlife has been greatly reduced. And every one of these sentences is uh, footnoted, you know, reference to other studies. 
in well-studied major taxonomic groups, thousands of species and myriad populations have vanished. The precise number of recent extinctions is impossible to know, but current animal species extinction rates are estimated to be hundreds or thousands of times higher than the background rates that prevailed for millions of years prior to the agricultural revolution. Now, understand they're talking about species, not entire genera. The number of vertebrate, those are guys with backbones, the number of vertebrate species known to have become extinct in the last 500 years would have taken some 10,000 years to vanish under background extinction rates. Data on most invertebrates and plants are, are even scantier. However, some groups also show substantial mutilation. To mutilate, to mutilate is to cause serious damage. An anthropogenic, otherwise known as human-caused rapid removal of branches from the tree of life is causing such damage. Furthermore, the potential losses of thousands of endangered vertebrate species and genera in this century would dwarf the damage done in the last 500 years. At least a third of land vertebrates are known to have decreasing populations, either through range contraction or shrinking numbers. For example, there were around 10 million, 10 million African elephants at the beginning of the 20th century, and now there are only about 450,000 remaining. In several countries, all elephant populations have gone extinct, and the great beasts are now absent from many large regions of other countries they once occupied. Surviving populations are scattered, and most of them are declining. <clears throat> We're not implying that the eventual extinction of African savanna elephants or all elephants is an example of a loss with a likely high cost to future Homo sapiens. <coughs> we are, however, implying that the patterns illustrated by this well censused iconic animal are likely replicated in many less prominent organisms in systems essential to the thriving of future people. It is well understood that losing species affects the global configuration of Darwin's tree of life the phylogeny of all living entities. Their disappearance is automatically changing the course of evolution by terminating unique pathways of biological change and has profound consequences on issues as diverse as morphological and ecological distinctiveness many with negative effects on ecosystem structure and function. However, because phylogenetic relationships and key data on ecological processes are so unevenly available across taxonomic groups, and because of the emphasis on species extinctions, the scientific literature is lacking an overview of the magnitude and impact of today's already substantial mutilation 
of the tree of life at higher taxonomic hierarchies, you know, such as genre. Here, you know, in this study, which I'm not going to break down, you can go on the link to see all this stuff. Here, we assess the magnitude of the current extinction crisis on the land vertebrate part of the tree at the generic level in order to investigate patterns of extinction beyond the levels of populations and species, we address the following questions. What is the magnitude of the current mutilation measured by recent extinctions of vertebrate genera? How do those current generic you know, genre-wide extinction rates compare with the background rates that prevailed in the last million years before human impacts. Number three, what are the patterns of global distribution of extinction and endangerment? And what are the implications of these findings for understanding the likely consequences of the mutilation of the tree of life for the future of biodiversity and the future of Homo sapiens. And so then if you go on the link, you can go through all of this where they break all of this down and graph it all out. You have your tables and your charts and your backgrounds and, and your figures and your little hockey sticks and uh, your dot connecting and uh, good lord, all the usual uh, going on and on. And uh, oh yeah, don't forget the maps. We got to have some maps, you know, looking uh, over. So anyway, let's get down, skip over that, and get to the discussion. So what have we learned? Just discuss what we have learned. <clears throat> Take it away, Gerardo and Paul. Mutilating the tree of life is changing the systems in which human beings and all other living organisms have evolved. These generic extinction rates in vertebrates are as much as hundreds of times higher than background rates. They are also somewhat higher than the rates estimated for vertebrate species. Detailed studies of invertebrate branches such as invertebrate branches such as land snails, freshwater mollusks, and insects on the one hand and the less examined plants and fungi on the other suggest these groups are experiencing like the vertebrates high mutilation rates. Earth has already lost and is now missing significant twigs and branches of the tree of life, losing evolutionary morphologies, ecological roles, and ecosystem functions depending on them, among many other things. This mass extinction is transforming the entire biosphere, possibly into a state in which it may be impossible for our current civilization to persist. The mutilation is eroding the generic library with consequences on ecosystem functioning and services, including primary pro productivity, the biogeochemical cycles, and species interactions, among many others. Uh, 
lacking knowledge of the evolutionary and ecological roles of threatened vertebrates does not preclude us from seeing that it is essential for humanity to take immediate action. Huh. After all, we and all other species have evolved together, thriving within a stable tree of life. Yes. <clears throat> the loss of a widespread genus can have an impact on the function of an entire ecosystem. The anthropogenic extinction of the passenger pigeons narrowed human diets in the northeastern North, in northeastern North America an altered ecosystem structure over wide areas, along with other extinctions and population declines, such as cougars and wolves, and resultant shifts in rodent communities, the region likely became ripe for outbreaks of many zoonotic infectious diseases such as the tick-borne the tick -born disease which causes Lyme disease, a nasty and increasingly common human malady. Uh, Sancho has Lyme's disease. I don't know if I have it or not. I very well might have it myself. Indeed, indeed, there is substantial reason to believe that the destruction and geographic homogenization of the biosphere that accompanies the mutilation of the tree of life at the generic and other taxonomic levels is increasing pandemic disease risk for all macroorganisms, including Homo sapiens. Do you think so? In the last chapter, <clears throat> during past mass extinctions, there was no species with the power or interest to stop extinctions and no conscious stake in maintaining biodiversity. Today, there is a species that should know it is not able to wait millions of years for its life support systems to be restored after a mass extinction. Ironically, the scale that species, the scale of that species of activities is the sole cause of today's biological Holocaust. There is one cause for today's biological holocaust, or I guess I could see, say, eight billion causes. What is crystal clear is that the trajectory of the dimming future of civilization will be directed in part not just by the overall loss of biodiversity, but by the pattern of our mutilation of the tree of life. The scientific community understands this existential problem, so it is time to generate public understanding into policy action while there is still a rapidly disappearing window of opportunity dun, 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 to act. Yes, I, 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 now, I honestly don't know. I, I mean, I, guys, I really don't know. If the, if the editors of the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, if the editors and publishers 
forced Paul Ehrlich and Gerardo Ceballos to write that unadulterated horse shit hopium into the second to the last sentence or not. I don't know if they were directly forced to in order to get their paper published or, uh, you know, after a couple of bottles of wine, Gerardo and Paul said, you know, we might want to drop in this nudge, nudge, wink, wink, unadulterated horseshit so we could get the rest of this article out. I, I, I honestly don't know because I honestly do know that Paul and Gerardo know goddamn well that the window of opportunity to uh, derail the six mass extinction was slammed shut 50 years ago. What happens in the next two decades? Two decades. What happens in the next two decades will very likely define the future of biodiversity and Homo sapiens. Two decades. So you think so, Paul and Gerardo? Two decades. 2053. What happens between now and 2053? I'm thinking uh, what happens between now and tomorrow morning will determine. Uh... Anyway, and I'm actually shocked to see that on a uh, planet of 8 billion people, that 11 people, 11 people out of 8 billion commented on that story. Uh, anyway, get out there and enjoy mutilating the tree of life. Well, you still can. Bye, guys.